Hello and welcome to today's webinar, The Looming Culture Crisis. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome each and every one of you here today. Uh, and very shortly, I'll be introducing you to our founder and CEO, Stefan Wiesenbach. But before I do, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping to cover off before we start the presentation. Firstly, um, we're keen to make sure that this presentation is of most value to each and every one of you that are attending today. Therefore, you'll notice on the right hand side a chat box. This is where you can submit any questions that you might have during the presentation and we'll be sure to get to those right at the end. Um, secondly, for those of you that may uh, lose contact with the webinar or lose connection, um, because we're using Webinar Jam, they've thought of this, there is a red button at the very top of your screen. Uh, simply click that and that'll bring you straight back into the presentation. And finally, we're gonna be sharing uh, a few things with you and under the offers tab on the right hand side, you will see a number of things that we share that you can click on uh, that will take you straight to uh, the documents that we're speaking about. So without further ado, um, I'm gonna introduce to our founder, Stefan. And for those of you that know me, you'll know that I've been working with Stefan and Engagement Multiplier for a number of years. And this is a particular topic that has, uh, that has been screaming out to me and I'm very excited about it that we're gonna be sharing with you today. So without further ado, please let me introduce you to our founder and CEO, Stefan Wiesenbach. Stefan, over to you. You're muted, Stefan, so you might want to do that with the uh, mic on. <laughs> Thank you very much, Steve. And uh, if everyone can hear me, I will say that again. Uh, good afternoon for those of you in the UK and good morning for those of you that are joining us from the US. So today's agenda. Um, I want to talk about the looming culture crisis. Uh, this has really gripped me, caught my attention. I've been watching what's been going on over the last uh, 10 months or so, and I can very clearly see um, that a lot of businesses are heading unknowingly uh, towards a bit of a brick wall. So we're going to talk about that and what that is. Um, and I'm going to share with you what the four elements are that make up uh, the culture crisis. And then, um, because it's not all bad news today, I'm going to present to you a very elegant solution that will enable you to navigate this and not fall foul of it. So let's just talk about the culture crisis and the fact that many leaders are overlooking it. And it, it's it's about um, the forces that threaten company culture that have been set in place by COVID. And so what we have is we have a set of unique threats now in businesses that are really um, going to have uh, adverse consequences and, and, and make it very difficult for businesses that don't take account of them to successfully rebound in 2021. And don't we just want to rebound? I mean, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm a bit tired with, um, you know, COVID and uh, its impact. I've loved some of the innovations and new capabilities that um, organizations have created as a result. But uh, I think um, most of us are desperate to get back to what we're talking about being the new normal. And we want it to be successful. So let's talk about the culture crisis. So what's really happened over the last 10 months is that leaders, quite rightly, have been putting their time, their energy, uh, and their attention into navigating COVID from a business perspective. And I'm sure for many of you on this webinar today, uh, leaders in businesses, you, like me, spent time uh, last year um, rapidly mobilizing to ensure that your businesses could succeed and survive uh, those really challenging times. And that was retaining clients, preserving cash, maybe getting some financing in, you know, adapting how people worked. So a lot of a lot of very good activity. And we've seen some great things happening amongst our clients. But one of the problems that I see that's been that's, that's, that's very prevalent is that um, leaders and leadership teams have been focusing on things from a business perspective. Uh, and other than when it comes to, you know, working from home and making sure that team members can navigate that in businesses where it's relevant, most are not thinking about it any more deeply uh, from an employee perspective. And I'd just like you to reflect on that for a moment in your organization and think about all of the wonderful changes and uh, all the agility that you've displayed over the last 10 months. But just reflect on, on, on that and how much of that was really about business preservation and survival uh, and how much of it um, really was from an employee perspective. Now, so we're in a situation now, like it or not, 
Um, and, and I'm not here to just um, bring bad news. I'm here to share with you what the reality is. Uh, and any business owner that thinks that this isn't happening is probably a little delusional because employees are fragile uh, and company culture in, in the majority of organizations is stressed. And it's not helped by the fact that every time we turn on the television or you know the radio, uh, the the news is not uplifting. You know, it's it's consistently um, very depressing. I had a f close friend, similar age to me, die yesterday from COVID. There is not a lot of good news out there in the moment. And, and so what that means is that employees who have been feeling very vulnerable, even for organizations that have mobilized effectively and their jobs are technically secure, um, they are fragile and company culture is stressed. And the common enemy, COVID-19, that united us last year, and in fact, um, we saw evidence of this providing a short-term substitute for an engaged purpose as team members, you know, rallied together to, you know, let's fight this together. And there was an absolute lift in engagement levels as a result of that. Uh, it gave people a purpose to unite around, and it gave a false sense of security for many leaders that thought, ah, oh, we've got a really great uh, purpose uh, connected team here. And what we're seeing in a lot of organizations now is as the pandemic um, wears on ad nauseum, um, we are seeing that fall away. Uh, in the US, um, we're seeing that the um, employee engagement levels uh, are back now to where they were before COVID-19. And uh, that short term lift has uh, has fallen away. So we've never experienced anything like the challenges that we're experiencing right now. And so what this unique set of circumstances challenges us to do as leaders is to assess the team with fresh eyes, um, look at the concerns that are there right now um, and understand the unique forces that the pandemic has created uh, and take uh, appropriate action. So 2020 was really hard um, and uh, I think it's fair to say that the next few months aren't really going to be any better. Um, working from home, I know uh, if, like me, you know, you're know, you working from home, um, it was much more enjoyable and easier and more uplifting when the sun was shining. And I'm here in not so sunny Warwickshire today. Um, it's cold, it's grey. And so a lot of employees working from home um, are finding that loneliness and isolation are setting in. And we know because it's there's an overwhelming amount of evidence around this that mental health is a is a real rising issue in this pandemic. So great article in the Harvard uh, Business Review recently, which is worth a read, which talks about the home stretch is going to be long and it's perhaps going to take a greater toll on our personal and professional lives than we expect it to. Um, like I said, there's quite a lot of um, harsh, harsh truths here, um, which might make you feel initially a little bit flat, but the good news is there is a wonderful solution uh, and, and, and ignoring these would be foolish. So I'm going to share with you a, 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 a grainy image, um, which some of you may recognize. Um, it's a picture taken in the 1956 Grand National, hence the, uh, the quality of the pixels. Um, and this picture was taken just 25 yards from the finish line. And the jockey there that you can see standing on the pancaked horse is Dick Francis, um, who after this moment became an international best-selling author. And he's riding the Queen Mother's horse, Devon Locke. So until just before the moment that this photo, or just before the moment this photo was taken, uh, they were off to a thrilling victory. <laughs> So they were leading the field by some margin. And then as they approached the finish line, for some inexplicable reason, Devon Locke did a pancake like this. And the rest of the field raced on past. And um, whilst the, the horse and rider here were unhurt, um, they had lost the biggest race that they could have ever possibly won. Um, pretty deflating moment. And so Dick Francis um, there on the horse, um, I'm saying to you, don't have a Dick Francis moment. So your businesses have done an incredible job of getting to this point um, in the journey with COVID. You've managed to navigate 2020. You're here as we go into 2021 and the finishing line is in sight. And let's be let's be realistic. The finishing line is in sight. 
And so what you want to do is you want to rush through that successfully and not have a Dick Francis moment. And a lot of businesses, unfortunately, at the moment are going to fall at the final hurdle because they're seeing that the end of the pandemic with vaccinations and everything else is going to signal an opportunity to return to business as normal. But what I'm about to share with you is going to bite at that point in time. And that's where the businesses that aren't prepared are going to get hurt. So culture is eroding at companies worldwide right now. Um, employee engagement um, and performance are diminishing. And um, if you don't act now to um, to address this, you're going to, I said, you're going to risk wasting that work um, and end up with a Dick Francis moment. So let's talk about the four forces. Uh, I do love this slide. So the four horsemen, for those of you that um, don't know the four forces of the, uh, of the or four horsemen of the apocalypse, they were pestilence, war, famine, and death. Not nice. And um, with a smile, I actually think that um, taking this through into the current climate, um, those businesses that ignore these cultural forces um, could find that their businesses do uh, end up with a bit of famine. And unfortunately, in some cases, it will be the last mistake that they make. So let's look at the four forces um, in this current, uh, this current climate. The first one is fatigue. So there's rising burnout, uh, there's rising exhaustion, and there's employee fragility. Misalignment, we're seeing across the board, there is rapidly growing misalignment between employers and employees. There is a certain amount of resistance now. There's a disconnect around returning to the workplace. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And employees' expectations uh, have dramatically changed. I mean, we've had to, necessity is the mother of invention, and we've had we've had to invent, reinvent, and, and, uh, and change the way that in many businesses we do business. And as we come out of this, I think there is a real risk, and we're seeing that there's a real risk of misunderstanding. So let's look at each of these um, in turn. So the first one, fatigue um, and burnout, we're, we're, there's so much evidence of this on being on the rise out there in the market. And some organizations, I know on a previous webinar, I spoke about uh, organizations that um, were micromanaging their employees, you know, worried about the fact they can't trust them because they're working from home. And sure, you may have in your organization one or two people, they tend to be in the minority that take advantage of working from home. Um, but in the in the main, majority of employees actually go above and beyond and do even more probably than is expected of them. So measuring employees and micromanaging them based on inputs rather than outputs is a fundamental mistake that a lot of organizations have been making and they need to stop uh, and they need to focus on outcome driven management rather than rather than inputs. But what we're seeing is that when um, time off, and this is very relevant over the um, over the holiday period that we've just had, um, employees taking time out uh, and having a break. Um, when, when people come back to work um, and time away hasn't solved it, that's a really interesting sign that exhaustion uh, and fatigue are in place. So um, we're seeing as well that um, sadly, um, and I know there's a lot of jokes on the, about this on social media, um, Use of alcohol, drugs, and antidepressants, um, you know, on, on all seriousness, are an alarming, an alarming rate of increase, and they're on the rise. And um, businesses that um, don't think that this is happening amongst their team members are, are kidding themselves. So, this is not about the people. This is about the workplace and the working conditions that are creating this fatigue and burnout at a time when employees are being fed negative media all of the time. We also then have this situation with employer and employee expectations being misaligned. So um, in normal times, your organization would have had clearly defined uh, compensation scheme and uh, times of the year when you may have done pay increases or bonuses and so on. And in a lot of cases, many businesses last year simply focused on survival. So uh, very common to see that um, there was a freeze on pay increases uh, in many organizations um, Thing, cutting back, conserving cash, understandable. And from a leader's perspective, these were reasonable actions to take. But we're in a situation now where even with uncertainty clouding the future um, and business leaders focusing still on business continuity, we're seeing that there's a 
disconnect um, and a lack of alignment between employees and their beliefs around this and uh, the employer. Uh, one, this is one that can easily be solved, by the way, but um, there's a lot of employees as we move into 2021 uh, and some of the things that they had hoped would manifest themselves in terms of pay increases, bonuses, career progression that don't, don't manifest themselves because from a business perspective, it's perhaps not right to do that right now. Um, those employees risk um, having the feeling that they're being treated unfairly. And there's some a number of drivers of dissatisfaction and disengagement. And the problem with this is that um, with that disconnect and without alignment, uh, your best employees will lead, leave. And it will tend to be the ones that, frankly, performed exceptionally well, um, helping your business navigate this time because they're going to feel uh, they're not recognized. And this doesn't mean my solution to you is not, OK, so you go and award pay rises and you you go and um, uh, give bonuses. Uh, there is actually a more elegant way of dealing with this that, that, that will address um, the, the, the problem. The third area um, we're going to look at is this sort of growing resistance around returning to the workplace, because I appreciate that in some businesses and some of you on this call today um, have businesses where you physically need to have your employees on site in order for the business to function. But many businesses have realized now that they can very effectively operate from with, with employees working from home at least some of the time. And under my working from home and winning webinar uh, a few months back, uh, we shared some very interesting statistics about over 64% of organizations moving into 2021 uh, expected uh, there to be an element of working from home uh, within their organizations um, moving forward. And I know that in our business, we're never going to come back to business as it was before with people in the office five days a week. It's um, our team members love the idea of being able to avoid having to commute some of the time. They have childcare issues that they need to manage. And actually, our business is getting the productivity of our team members is higher than it's ever been. And so why would we want to start forcing and going back to the old ways when actually what we've got is working really well? So uh, employees are worried about that. And if you haven't been clear with employees about how things are going likely to shape up or that you're addressing it as we move forward, and there's a lack of understanding between how you're going to handle the new normal um, and what the employees feel would be appropriate, if you can't find a way to work, make that work, then employees will find a way to make it work elsewhere because they have realized that um, they can effectively work from home in many cases. And a lot of organizations out there are um, very willing to have talented employees spending some of the time working from home. And then there's the issue of safety. Um, for those that are returning to the workplace, they obviously want to know that moving forward, um, their safety is being um, is being recognized and, and and focused on and yes we've had we've got covid and it will pass but it's going to change the way we think about airborne disease and viruses and uh, organizations will need to absolutely even post in, in that wonderful time when let's say covid's gone still we'll need to be focusing on employee safety so um, the pandemic's proven absolutely, and you'll see this in your businesses, that employers can make big changes. Uh, leaders can prioritize employees' health and well-being because we had to. Um, under the circumstances, we made huge changes and we can focus on employee engagement. So uh, businesses have adopted you know, Zoom technology, communication in the majority of organizations uh, under the pandemic has, has, has improved because they've, they've, they've had to get to a position where they can communicate with employees working remotely. And so the ongoing challenges are that employees are going to expect some of these changes to be permanent. Um, you've got to get ahead of this because it will make or break your ability to retain top talent. As I've said, there's going to be a um, when 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 things get back to being a little bit feeling a bit safer. That's when people that have been sitting tight but are frustrated are going to start to look for for other work. Uh, at the moment, people are grateful to be employed. Um, but that gratitude, um, if these issues aren't addressed, will fall away quite quickly. So top of mind for 2021, and we did a, um, a blog on this recently. This is a huge theme that you, you really should, as business owners, be focusing on, 
is uh, that sense of belonging. Um, employees wanting uh, a sense of belonging. Uh, diversity inclusion in the workplace. In, set, in fact, a sense of belonging is trumping compensation. Uh, and support for employee mental health. All, all important issues as we move forward into 2021. So what's the remedy against these forces that exist in all of our businesses to a greater or a lesser extent, depending on what we did? But I think there's going to be very few businesses that don't have an element uh, of one or more of these forces at play. And the way to prevent a culture crisis and inoculate against one in the future is for you to take control back from the pandemic, because the pandemic's obviously at the moment got control of us. And um, the four stages are, first of all, acceptance. So there needs to be acceptance um, within your business from your leaders that these issues are real and they could uh, exist uh, in, in the firm or in the organization. And my point on this is that even if you think your organization is perfect, might it not be a good idea just to check, because these issues are real and they are global, that in your business, even in your perfect business, you're absolutely sure that there isn't a problem. And the way you do that is by going through a process of understanding, and I'm going to explain how you do that shortly. And for clients of Engagement Multiplier that are on this call, um, welcome. Um, we've, we, we can get this set up and running for you straight away. For, for those of you that haven't worked with us before, we're providing you with a free capability at the end of this webinar that will enable you to understand the truth. And it is genuinely a free capability, no strings attached. Um, I want you to help understand where the issues are um, and then navigate this crisis. And once you've understood to what extent these issues exist within your business, then you need to communicate um, effectively and import, uh, importantly on what matters. Um, something that's very easy to do when you properly understand what's going on. And then you'll be uh, in a position where you'll be empowered to take action, uh, but action not just for the sake of action um, or paying lip service to a potential topic, but action that will make a real difference because you have that understanding. So our culture crisis vaccination. So the first point, acceptance. Um, I deliberately wanted to keep things brief today because we've got a time for Q&A &A at the end. But um, for those of you that want more evidence and more detail on this, we have an absolutely fabulous white paper that um, will be coming out next week, which each and every one of you will receive as a result of registering for this webinar. And for those of you that are focused on data and, and, and facts, uh, this is loaded with evidence um, uh, on the culture crisis um, and, and what's coming along. In terms of you then understanding the position in your own organization, what we've done is we've created a COVID culture check module on our platform, which we're making completely available completely for free for uh, businesses that don't yet work with us. Uh, for existing clients, it's part of the library of on-demands and your business engagement manager will be um, helping you to run this um, at a time to suit you. So that benchmark assessment and COVID culture module will give you uh, the unvarnished truth, um, which is why we only like working with brave leaders. Sometimes the truth isn't that nice, but actually um, all, all progress starts with, with knowing the truth and understanding what issues exist within your business is very powerful. It puts you in a position to actually do something about them. And then um, our platform, which um, uh, I said we're making available for free for prospective clients. Um, and if you just use us for this module and you choose not to use us again, that's absolutely fine. Um, there are no strings attached. Um, our tools enable anonymous, completely anonymous um, and effective, secure communication. So. Um, responding to the feedback and the results that you get from the COVID culture check. Uh, we've got the tools and the capabilities to make it really easy for you to be able to communicate with team members and uh, then to take action um, on the areas that your business would benefit from. So just to sort of reflect on this, um, and I said this to a client the other day, um, we've already had a year of nasty, unexpected surprises, haven't we? And my question to you is, do you really want more? Because this um, culture crisis is going to deliver a series of nasty, unexpected surprises 
for the businesses that haven't taken the time just to get one step ahead, which is our theme for the year in our organization, um, just to get one step ahead of where the problems are so that you can be proactive rather than having to be reactive. Um, we spent 2021 being reactive because there was lockdowns when we didn't expect them, a um, whole series of changes forced upon us, and we did a great job of being reactive. Uh, look, we're here, we're still here to tell the tale. But actually, I, I think if you're like me, you prefer to be in a position where um, you've got the information to be able to make an informed decision ahead of the event and be proactive. And that's exactly what going through this process is going to do for you. So in terms of what to do next, as I mentioned earlier, for existing clients, just um, tell your engagement manager um, that you're interested in pursuing this and they'll, uh, uh, as they always do, spend time with you helping you move that forward. Um, and if you want to, you can just field it as a standalone um, uh, on-demand survey. Um, that's going to be available uh, at the, the, uh, the beginning of the week of the 8th of Feb. For um, people that aren't currently working with us, um, then there's a link here, uh, freeoffer.engagementmultiplier.com forward slash CC. I'm going to leave that on the screen. Um, and you will also receive uh, uh, an update following this webinar with the link in it. Uh, and if you'd like to claim your free benchmark assessment and your COVID culture check module, then all you need to do is just register via that link. Um, and we really look forward to helping you. Um, the the experience we have already been doing um, and, and focusing on this uh, in our own business uh, and with a small number of clients. This is not a uh, this is not something that we're we haven't tested yet. Uh, the insights are incredible. Um, even in a business, I'd lie, I'm very proud of my team. They're amazing and um, they're very engaged. But just going through the process of asking some of these questions uh, really does deliver some fabulous and fascinating insights, which puts you in a very powerful position to take action. So um, Steve's been monitoring the feed. Um, if you could join us now, Steve, uh, we're going to move into a Q&A. Uh, and this is where you all get to ask me whatever questions you like and put me in the hot seat. Which I'm looking forward to. Thank you. Uh, we definitely have some of those. So, um, so first of all, thank you, Stefan. I found, as I said at the very beginning, I found this a particular interest. And in fact, my first question, which comes through from a John McCure, um, asks, I didn't appreciate the difference between burnout and exhaustion. How can we tell the difference in our people? Um, and this was something that definitely, again, mentioned the white paper. This is something that stood out for me in the white paper. So um, expand on that. Indeed. So, um, in fact, there is a there is a section on, on this in the white paper. Um, and um, bur bur burnout is um, exhaustion is just effectively um, uh, uh, tiredness. Right. OK. I mean, we've all had it. We've um, we've been um, and we will have it again in the future. Uh, if you're in a business that's progressive, there are times when. Everyone has to knuckle down, get things done. There's some long hours to work and and, and it can be exhausting um, and, and exhaustion. You can um, quite quickly bounce back from um, burnout is an entirely different thing. That is when um, it's really starting to take its toll on your mental well-being um, as well as your fit. Exhaustion is more physical. Burnout is more mental. I think that would be a, a, a more eloquent way of saying it. Uh, much harder to bounce back from burnout. Not impossible. Uh, much harder to bounce back from burnout than it is to bounce back from exhaustion. So um, the extent to which your employees are exhausted versus burnout will come through um, asking the questions under the, the COVID culture assessment. Um, and I sincerely hope for you and your business that there's very little evidence of burnout. But uh, the reality is in a lot of organizations, employees are really feeling burnt out. So um, knowing what knowing the extent to which it exists enables you to do something about it. Thank you. And this leads on to my next question from uh, Desmond Kingston. Um, we're not planning pay rises this year, uh, which is a change from what we normally do. However, if circumstances change, um, we may reverse, uh, reverse that decision. What's your advice for talking about this to employees? I fear people could be disappointed, which which I would think would make things Thanks, worse. Thanks, Desmond. Great point. Um, I am. Um... I went for a walk just before jumping online today just to get some fresh air. And um, I was thinking about the fact that there, in every organization, um, you, you potentially have what I would call unreasonable employees. Um, 
And you also have, um, sadly, in many organizations, what I would call unreasonable leadership from leaders. And um, my experience is that um, honesty uh, and clear communication um, always win the day because uh, we talk about sort of the water cooler, that's an American term, I know, sort of conversations or the, 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 the chat and conversation that takes place without leadership hearing People will often make up problems to be bigger than they are in reality. So if you haven't had pay rises last year and things are still tight, people might have already made up the fact that, oh, we're not going to get pay rises this year or we're not sure whether we're going to when we're next going to get pay rises. And I actually think the best thing you can do as an organization is to um, treat your employees like grown ups. I know that not all of them are reasonable employees and so some of them shouldn't you know won't re won't react to it well but the majority will and they're the ones you want to keep and so if your organization is in a position where you're focused this year on business survival and continuity and um you're not um you are genuinely um you know controlling the costs you know the ceo isn't going to turn up in a brand new ferrari whilst there's you know no pay rises being given you are genuinely across the board uh, making making um, uh, cuts and, and, and running the business carefully, I think that the best thing you can do is to level with your team members uh, and say what you just said in your question. You know, you, you're you're not planning on doing it this year, but if circumstance for the reasons of as follows, but if um, we're in a position where things improve, then then we'll let you know and we will bring it forward. Um, but our, our focus, and you've got to focus on the benefit for the employees. Our focus is on preserving um, the business and making sure that the business can continue to be stable and secure so that as the better times return, when they will, we can get back to a normal system of rewarding team members. And we hope that you will stay with us and um, you know, work with us to ride through this. Um, and we really appreciate your support. I just think that a bit of honesty goes like that and, and clear communication goes a really, really long way. And if you don't do that, then they're making it up anyway. You know, they'll be they'll be making up problems in their own head. It's better to get them dragged out into the open where they normally shrink. So, I think a couple of things just to add to that. What we've talked about in previous webinars is about the fact that employees right now, more than ever before, are looking to leadership for clear, concise communication. Um, so again, going back to what you've just said there, I think that's what it is. You can't trip over the truth. Be honest with your people where you can, uh, and just be clear with it. And uh, away you go. Good. All right. Well, um, moving on to Nathan Stanley. How prevalent do you believe the issues you describe are within organisations? Uh, I would be so bold as thanks, Nathan. I would be as so bold as to suggest that um, um, pretty every, pretty much every business will have um, an element of one or more of these issues in play. Um, um, just being very frank with you, I mean, I'm very proud of our organization. We had a record year last year. You know, we had a best year in the worst year ever. Um, team were incredible. Um, um, and yet, uh, and we have excellent communication. Um, I, um, I know that we have uh, an element of some of these issues in our business that we're in the process of addressing. So, um, and that's an organization that, that is really good. We practice what we preach. We're really good at this. Um, we tend to lead from the front and make sure that we, before we share things with clients, you know, we walk the talk. So, uh, and friends that have businesses um, that I talk to, fellow entrepreneurs, um, if they're really honest with themselves, they will sit back and go, well, you know, we, we probably do. It might be that you've got an amazing organization where there's hardly anything to address. Well, happy days wouldn't it be great just to have that confirmation um and you can then sort of say at your leadership meeting well we haven't got to divert resources to this because we we've, we've done a health check and we're, we're in good shape let's let's power on for 2021 and do some great stuff but i i wouldn't i wouldn't ignore finding out i, I just don't think that's wise i think that followed on by brian bennett's question here uh, and he says he asks about the covid check he says does the covid culture check work with employees who are either full-time or part-time or furloughed? Yes, yes, no. Um, so um, I, the, the rules of furlough frustrate me because um, uh, I think um, 
slightly misguided from a government perspective. You know, I understand you know providing financial support and furloughing an employee, but uh, the conditions are that you can't. If you start running things like surveys about the workplace with furloughed employees, um, you are, um, we're advised, running that risk that over that next five year period where they're going to be doing all these investigations to find out what money they can claw back, um, you put that at risk. So we, we are, as an organization, um, saying to our clients um, that you shouldn't be furloughing, you shouldn't be surveying furloughed employees. But what you can do, and we do a lot of work in hospitality, uh, where a lot of employees are furloughed right now, what you can do is you can get um, ahead of it by getting ready for the day that they come back to be able to then connect with them with some positive news about, uh, so you've been using our COVID culture check uh, and some of the other resources we have available, we're putting those businesses in a position where they can really positively engage with their team members and give them confidence um, as they come back into the workplace. But um, other than that, I would not differentiate between full-time and part-time. Uh, and in fact, um, organizations that we work with that have a high element of contracted workers that tend to work as self-employed, but you know they're spending a lot of time dealing with that business, um, they're even involving them in the survey process to understand how they feel, because their opinions matter too. So um, whether someone's working part-time because of their circumstances, full-time doesn't matter. Very good. And then we've got Mike Buckley here. Um, what would you suggest if some of my leaders who lead teams are showing signs of burnout? I rely on them to rally the team. Well, um, my grandfather, God bless his soul, always said to me, Stefan, the fish rots from the head. Right. Um, and it's an interesting phrase that um, organisations that are rotten um you 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 to find out why you normally just need to look at the top of the organization so um similarly if you've got employees if you've got leaders that are struggling right now um then a very smart thing to do would be to do this with them um you can easily do it in two steps if you wish do this with them um start addressing some of their concerns um have some open clear communication uh, they will respond very well to it um you'll get a great reaction and then having um, spent time helping them feel um, stronger about this uh, and more positive about the future, you can then um, work with them to roll it out amongst the, the team members, the employees. It is important. You're absolutely right. You are dependent on your leadership to make something like this work. And therefore, it's important that they have buy-in. And therefore, if you've got some issues uh, or you think that this is applying to leadership, um, you can easily do it in two stages. Or you can have the conversation with leadership about this concept um, and um, do it all in one go and for them to be part of the entire exercise because their feedback matters just as much as the employees. So um, every, the great thing about Engagement Multiplier and the process we take, it's uh, often been referred to as democratically transformative because everybody's vote carries equal weight. So um, up to you whether you do it in two stages so that you've got confidence that they're going to respond well or to do it all in one go. This is, a, this is a question that's coming through from a Jonathan Kimbrell. This is more about you than the platform. How many years of experience do you have with employee engagement? What is your basis for the consulting? Uh, consulting? Uh, well, I don't do consulting, but I, well, um, we, we've created a platform based on the truths. I, I've been doing this for 26, 27 years. Um, and... Um, I have absolutely zero professional qualifications. I didn't go to university to learn about this. I've never written a thesis on it. Um, I have spent um, uh, the last 20 plus years working with literally thousands of organizations uh, and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Um, back in the earlier days, it was using manual systems such as um, scorecards and um, if you look at my book, The Engaged Organization, there's the original scorecard from sort of 20 years ago that we used to use uh, and, and share with clients. But now technology is wonderful and it's provided us with a platform to make a real difference. And I, I decided um, uh, about seven years ago that um, my purpose in life was to help 100 million people become measurably more engaged and happier at work. And I realized that you're never going to do that unless you make what you do available to a very big audience via technology. Um, so that's how the technology um, comes through. And, and 
And but don't take my word for it. I mean, if you if you haven't used the platform yet, I said we're making it available for free. Um, take a survey and you will see very quickly how effective these tools uh, and strategies are. But we're not a coaching organization. Um, most of the, you know, the, we have some great um, team members that will provide white glove support and help you. But as we say to, uh, to our clients all the time, they often say, well, we're just about to run this survey. Will you help us when we get the results? And we say, of course we will. But actually, you, you probably won't need us because it's going to be blindingly obvious what you need to do uh, to address the issues that exist within your business. And whilst we've got numerous success guides and support resources that we provide, actually, very rarely do we find that clients are saying, I'm really stuck with this problem. Um, what would you suggest? Um, and then where that happens, we're a easily able to reference other organizations that we're working with and what they've done uh, to address those problems. So hopefully that answers the question. Uh, but I am very passionate about this and we're very good at it and um, would love to work with you if we're not already. Very good. Uh, this one's come through um, anonymously. Uh, what is your advice for helping a CEO who is defensive when giving ne negative feedback? I see the value of what you are saying, but I don't believe it would be well received within my organization. Hmm. Great question. Um, like I said earlier, the friend, my dear granddad, fish rots from the head, right? Um, I think it's a shame, isn't it? If you're a, I, I believe in brave, caring, identifiable leaders. Um, I don't always, um, I sometimes have to, you know, check myself when I read some of the feedback because none of us are perfect. And so in my business, I get scored as the, as the owner, um, on our platform. Um, and you know, there's times been times over the last seven years where my team have given me some unambiguous feedback and it's, it's absolutely justified. And, um, some people struggle with that. Um, other people find it very easy. Um, if you've got a CEO that is um, believes they're above it all um, and isn't prepared to receive feedback from their team members or to understand the issues that truly exist within the business, some of which may have been their making, um, unfortunately, it's hard. Um, uh, sometimes you can't put in what God left out. Um, and either... For an organization like that to have to, to, to affect to be successful, either the, the the people at the top have got to start to become either more self-aware or willing to have feedback, um, or they're going to run the risk of being um, an organization that perhaps uh, doesn't survive quite as long as it would do um, if they were a little bit more receptive. And um, all I can say is that, um, you know, share the, share with them the white paper that we're sending you next week and um you know, make the point we've already had a year of unexpected, nasty surprises. Do we really want more? And um, let's find out what people really think. Let's find out where the issues are in our business. And then let's let's pull together and get them solved and make this a really great place to work um, and see if you can appeal to the um, the ongoing commercial viability of the organization in their minds as uh, and it being relevant. But if you've got a leader that just sees employees as a commodity rather than uh, a, a family or a team, um, it's hard, hard work. I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer, but um, that's the reality of it. I think just to expand on that is that you might actually be surprised. Um, you know, one thing about our platform is it provides evidence. Um, it removes it from being an emotional conversation around how people feel or think to being data-driven conversation. Um, and in my experience of delivering thousands of these reports to businesses all over the world is that when you see the evidence put in front of you, it's very hard to ignore. So whether you're a CEO who is defensive on or doesn't like receive negative feedback, they're going to want to see it to go away. Um, uh, so you might, again, so you might be surprised that once you get the data in, actually kickstart something really positive in the business. Yeah, I agree, Steve. I think the issue that a lot of people uh, um, uh, and potentially um, uh, in this case, if the CEO isn't willing to have the feedback in the first place, um, that's the first hurdle. You want to get them to... Uh, a point of acceptance, hence we had acceptance on our first point. If they, if they accept this issue might exist and they want to find out what the, what, what the reality is, um, then you're in, you're, you're, in a, you're in a much stronger position. Um, it's whether or not you can get them to acceptance. Yeah, I agree. Um, another question here, this has come from Emma Cuggy. Um, now this is similar to one we've had already, but a slightly different context. When talking about misalignment and freezes on pay, 
How do you realign your employees and meet their expectations whilst ensuring you are securing the finances of the company? Um, Steve, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so um, when talking about misalignment and freezes on pay, how do you realign your employee and meet to meet their expectations whilst ensuring you are securing the finances of the company? Okay. Great, great question, Emma. So the first thing you need to do is obviously, um, and I'm assuming I'm going to, the caveat here is I'm going to assume that this is being done with integrity. So the first thing that you have to do as an organization is to um, strategically figure out the plan. What is it we are able to do? Um, what is it that we're not able to do? Um, what's that going to mean to the financial state of the business? How long is this likely to go on for? Um, when things start to return to um, uh, 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 normal again or when business starts to improve, what are we prepared to do at that point for our team members um, that, have, that have stayed the course and hung on in there? Um, and, 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 and providing you're doing that with in integrity um, and you do care about your, your employees, then I would simply, once you've got your strategy down with, with its basis in fact and reality, is then I would have a, Back to the earlier point, I would I would have a communication and a, uh, 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 some engagement with the team members that that you know honestly explains what you're doing, why you're doing it, and what you intend to do um, when things improve. Um, and that if things don't improve, then you'll revisit the situation with them. But as soon as things do improve, you will let them know. And as I said earlier, you have unreasonable employees and unreasonable leaders and your unreasonable employees might not like what you've just said um, in terms of the honesty and everything that you've shared with them and they might think well I'm not prepared to hang around here anymore um, because I think I can do better elsewhere uh, they were probably thinking that anyway if they're truly committed to your organization they'll hang in there they'll appreciate the honesty um, and you'll get to you get them to ride through and, and, and stay the course. So uh, there is obviously a risk in any organization if you're not um, providing um, uh, improvements to compensation and employees are working really hard. Um, unless you physically discuss it with them and acknowledge it and explain what you're going to do about it, you run the risk of losing those employees anyway. So um, actually, you, you're in a much better position if you actually do communicate what you're doing, because otherwise, They'll make it up themselves uh, and, and they'll have their own version of what they think is going on. Right. Um, conscious of time. So we're just going to have two more questions. Um, first one here from Mark Carter. How does your platform help with the four forces of fatigue, misalignment, reassistance uh, and misunderstanding? So the, the first thing, uh, the first thing it does is um, it helps. Um, it puts you in a position where you can understand the extent to which these issues exist within your business. So uh, we have a confidential and anonymous structure that's highly effective, uh, that's very easy for employees to, to engage with and they trust it because they know it is anonymous. Um, so it, it provides you with the data around to what extent these, these issues exist within your business. And then um, alongside that, um, we provide some guidance on actions that can be taken but as I said earlier, once you know what the problems are or the, where the issues are, it's normally very easy to um, to understand what it is that you need to do next. And then once you've got a strategy for dealing with the, the challenges, because um, you don't want to ignore them, then once you know that they're there, um, then our platform provides um, a, a brilliant structure for communicating with the employees. It also has built into it the ability for you to have two-way communication between ownership, leadership, and an employee without either party knowing who the other is, So, um, uh, unless they put their name. So um, our platform has what's called Vault Technology. So someone's made a comment, you can actually communicate directly with the writer of that comment without um, disclosing who you are and without them uh, disclosing who they are. So it provides this very safe environment for you to bottom out issues uh, and, and get things resolved. So... Um, hopefully that answers the question. But if it doesn't, um, then I can get one of our engagement managers to actually just walk you through uh, a demo of the platform. If you just 
go on that link and click. Um, we'll get them to do a demo and you'll see exactly how uh, the platform does this in a very effective manner. OK, and this moves on to our final question for today. For everybody else that has submitted questions, we will come back to you. Um, straight after the uh, to, uh, straight after the webinar, uh, forgive my pronunciation. This is from a Maddy. I think it's Defazio Wright. Um, it says, "Thank you very much for all uh, the information so far. Very insightful. Working within the construction industry, individuals within our team are based on sites. Uh, forgive me. There's, the questions keep coming in, pushing it down. Um, uh, in, uh, yeah, individuals within teams are based on sites around the country." We are a team of 10, but growing quickly, and some team members have not met everyone yet due to COVID. Would you mind sharing any successful ways to encourage engagement and share best practice without it feeling like a first meeting on a Zoom or similar? Um, well, Zoom is great. <laughs> um, it, to share ideas and best practice and... Um, um, so unless you're able to, or well, you're not in a position where you can meet um, in person, but um, I would, um, the great thing about Zoom is you get to see someone's eyes, their face. Um, it's it's a more human way of making contact when you can't physically be together in person. Um, so, I mean, we use it extensively in our business. My, my daughter last year got a job working from home via Zoom. She still hasn't been into the office. Um, and um, um, but has it been integrated into the organization and uh, and they tend to use zoom for um coffee conversations or breakouts we 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 ran a zoom i ran a zoom um murder mystery party um and cooking class for all of my team um back in uh, back in november um and it was a, it was a, it was a roaring success we're just about to do another one um at the end of this quarter so you can use zoom um uh, as, as an effective way of doing that face to face and if um or or um you know written communication i mean i we go exactly the opposite way um handwritten notes of appreciation things like that have uh, have started to have you know, even greater impact in, in a in a very tech based world so um i would uh, just use the resources you have available to you whilst you can't meet in person and then you know get ready to do some great stuff when you can i think we can be true to that because i know as a team we've grown through covid and there are people in our team that we haven't met physically in person and yet um as a result of zoom and everything that we've done it feels like we've known them for years and it will not feel therefore awkward that first time you walk into a room together it'll feel like that someone you have met before um, it's not easy to achieve, but it but it is achievable for sure. Um, so in terms of question, like I said, we are going to come back to everybody uh, that has submitted questions um, after today's presentation, just to answer those that we haven't got round to. Uh, so do please st keep them coming if you have any more. Um, but um, through to you, Stefan, just to close out the uh, close out the presentation. Yes, well, thank you everyone for listening, and thanks for all the great questions. Um, and and you know, we will come back to you on those other questions. Uh, as I said earlier, we've had a year of a nasty, unexpected surprises. We don't want any more. Um, please do take us up on this offer. Uh, it has no strings attached to it. We want to help you. As we went into COVID, well, I took a decision as the founder of this business to put purpose ahead of profit and start creating really valuable free resources for the communities that we serve um, to help both um, our existing clients and um, the, the businesses that we like to work with navigate this pandemic. And this is this is more of the same. I, I think if you've got this far, congratulations. Um, I know it's been hard um, and it would be great in 12 months time for you to be looking back on this whole episode um, and, and, and being very proud of how you navigated uh, that final stage and didn't fall at the final hurdle. So um, please do take us up on our offer. We'd love to help you. And I wish you all the very best of success in 2021. And I hope for you, it is a record year as well. So thanks for listening and um, we look forward to hearing from you.